Hi YouTube, in this video I'm going to be making a Cyclops Ogre type creature um, and I just wanted to start really basically so I've just scrumpled up a whole load of aluminium foil just to give me my rough shape. Um, I'm going to be using Super Sculpey for this just because I went into a charity shop recently and my daughter found me a whole load of um, little packs of Super Sculpey that were quite hard actually, I had to spend quite a bit of time softening them all up but I'm going to use those just because it was kind of really cheap to get them and this is um, a material that you have to bake in the oven. So after I softened all the Super Sculpey together, um, actually my wife and daughter helped me soften it as well because it took quite a long time, um, this is the colour we ended up with when they're all mixed together. It's quite a nice um, purple colour but uh, I'll probably end up painting the creature as well at the end. So you can see all I've done now is just go over the whole um, shape of the aluminium foil, just with little kind of flat bits like I've just made here. Um, cover the whole thing so he's basically got a skin. So next I took a glass marble and just stuck it in the middle of his head. Now, it's got to be a glass marble. You can't obviously use plastic marbles because this all has to be baked in the oven at some point and the plastic marble will just melt. So yeah, make sure you use a glass one. And then you can see I've just used um, bits of the Super Sculpey just to create different shapes, like a really rough shape for a nose, really rough shape for like upper lip, lower lip. Um, and I've just kind of blocked it in really. Shapes for the cheeks and the chin and the sort of jowl areas. And then I've done, um, you know, eyelids over the top of the marble as well. It's just a really basic shape and a sort of upper eyebrow as well. Obviously he's only got one because he's a cyclops and I've done a lump for the back of his head as well. Next you can see that I ended up pushing my sculpting tool in between his upper lip and his lower lip and I pushed until I got a big hole so his mouth basically opened um, and I've really widened that and then I've added a few teeth at the front there um, then I started sculpting in lots of wrinkles and things. So all of the things like the cheeks, they start to soften in to the jowls and that kind of thing. Um, the nose, I've started sculpting more, giving him bigger nostrils. Um, and then I've added quite a lot more wrinkles, like on the eyelids, on the back of the head. So his uh, face starts to take shape quite a bit more at this point. If you ever want to sculpt some really basic hands, if you basically make two balls and attach them to the ends of the arms you know smooth them in and then all i do is just take a stick and i just make a hole right through the center of the hand um, and then what happens is it makes it really easy for you to kind of shape you know the thumb and the fingers just with lines basically um, you could then turn this into a really quite complex hand that would be a good starting point but here you can see down the center of each hand there's a hole um, what's really good about that is it means later on he can be holding things as well. So you could make a spear or an axe or something and it could just literally just slot into that hole. Um, you can see I've also done ears on his head and a horn right on the top. Okay, I added a ball of Super Sculpey to the bottom of each leg, softened it in, flattened it a bit, um, added slits for each toe and a bit of toenail detail. Um, I've stuck him on a bit of aluminium foil so that I can bake him later in the oven. I've added a bulge for his belly and a couple of nice man boobs. So I wanted to keep him quite fun and kind of cartoon-like. Um, this means that he can be simpler as well, so I don't have to spend too much time doing things. So I've added a lot of little warts, I've given him some nipples and a belly button. Those little details, you know, they're quite nice, but they're quite quick to do as well. Right, when I buy Lego and stuff from the car boot sale, quite often it'll come with all kinds of bits and bobs mixed in with it. So I just pick through and pick out all of the weapons and just put them in a little tub basically, save them for a rainy day. So in this case, look, there are a lot of axes and staffs and various um, guns and daggers and things. So I'll just choose the best combination for my little Cyclops guy um, and then I can cut these up and adapt them and just stick them into those holes that I've made in his hands. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. You can see he's got an axe in each hand. Um, I've given him like a little hammer thing down the side here 
Um, and I've added straps and things. He's also got another smaller axe down there, and he's got a sort of pouch thing on the back. There's a hair band going around to form one of the straps, and then the other straps are just like string around his wrists and his ankles, um, and I've done a sort of a plait of wire going all the way around. So this adds a lot of detail really easily. It's really fast to do. Um, so if you've ever made a basic character and you're thinking it's really simple, um, but you want to add more detail to it really quickly, this is a good way to go. Because when I paint all this up, I can you know add little paint details to all of these things. It's kind of cheating in a way to you know use axes and other weapons that you know are pre-made. But if you're wanting to be fast, it's a good kind of uh, way to save a lot of time. If I was making a model for somebody as a commission or something like that, that's different. Then I'd make everything from scratch, obviously. But with this sort of thing, uh, it just makes it a lot faster. OK, at this point, I had my wife saying, Oh, darling, please don't paint him. He looks so lovely in purple. And I had my kids as well saying, Oh, daddy. Daddy, please don't paint him. We do love him so in purple. Because um, obviously that's how they talk. And uh, so I thought, I don't particularly want to paint him. You know, he looks nice in purple. But I did want to bring out some detail. So what I've done here is I've just added a brown wash over the whole lot. And you can see the brown sinks down uh, into all the wrinkles and things and really starts to make those show up. It gets down in between the toes and into the sort of toenail details and that sort of thing. Um, and also, because it's brown, it kind of adds a sort of a dirty look to him as well. So it looks a bit, you know, a bit more like he's been out in the wild uh, getting soil and mud all over him. OK, so the brown wash is obviously made by mixing lots of water in with your paint. Um, and it's that wateriness that uh, makes the paint go into all of the deep areas and sink down into those lower places. Um, what I've done now as well is I've made the same purple that the creature is, but I've added white to it to make it lighter. Um, and then I've dry brushed this over all of the high areas, like all the bumps, you know, tops of his ears, top of his horn, um, that kind of thing it brings out all the wrinkle details as well so that's kind of the opposite of adding a wash when you do dry brush you're making the paint really thick and you're um, rubbing that on a bit of kitchen paper so that it's really dry there's hardly any paint on your brush and you're just rubbing that over all the top surfaces and it just um, brings out all the highlights and make him look slightly like he's glowing You can see the really rubbish brush that I use for dry brushing. It's got really roughed up bristles, really old, and it's just perfect because it really kind of drags over all of those areas really softly um, and just, yeah, dusts the paint on, basically. Okay, next I painted the eye and the teeth and the toenails white. At first, it looks really quite stark and a bit harsh, obviously, because it's bright white. But it's a good base colour, good starting point, uh, and then we can tone it down afterwards. OK, so this is what he ends up looking like when he's finished. And you can see right at the end, I've put in quite a lot of detail. So you switch to a much smaller brush. Um, you can see on the horn and the teeth and the toenails and the fingernails, I've done basically a blend from white to yellow ochre to brown at the bases so that really kind of makes those stand out on all the little weapons and things i've added various browns or yellow ochres and um, those sorts of colors just to kind of smooth all of those in make them look more like wood or whatever on the the metal parts of the axes i've just used silver paint to really kind of make those shiny on his eye you can see i've done a black um, slit pupil and then I've done a red iris which fades to yellow I've also done a little bit of red in the corners of the eye just blended that in a little bit and a bit of yellow to the whites of the eye as well to make that a little bit more realistic I added a red wash onto the top of each wart and that made those stand out you can see I painted the little yellow bag so that's brown um, so it all ties in nicely 
and you can add little highlights and things to his ropes and yeah any straps and that sort of thing so overall it adds a lot of detail right at the end probably this painting stage takes longer than all of the other painting stages combined um, it's the little details that really kind of make it so it's worth taking your time over this last bit and then he's completely done and you can uh, put him on your shelf with all your other weird creatures that you've made okay i hope this has inspired some of you to make a cyclops of your own um, hit subscribe if you want to see anything that i post up in the future thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video